Thanks everyone for joining today. Our topic is um, navigating the strategic portfolio management landscape with one plan. Strategic portfolio management is uh, um, one of the you know main topics, disciplines that we talk a lot about since one plan addresses all the different use cases that are within it. So we're gonna try to get um, go a little bit deeper today into each one of those um, use cases. So the first thing is why even talk about this? You know, why even um, address uh, process and tools? And what I would propose is that we look at um, you know project portfolio management as a discipline in itself. And this is this is something that is is difficult um, for management teams sometimes to understand. It is it is a competency that you need to work on, and uh, it's something that you need to improve over time. Uh, the practices have been around for 50 years, and um, you you do need to recognize it as a capability that you need to build within organizations. So, you know, in, in very, very general terms, it, you know, project portfolio management, which you can elevate to strategic portfolio management or a set of processes and tools that allow an organization to achieve strategy, make better investments, Im improve the use of resources, so that um, you know you can achieve um, your strategy, which includes you know meeting customer expectations, meeting stakeholder expectations, meeting um, shareholder expectations if you happen to be a public company, and it does require continuous improvement. So the point here is that you have to be looking at what's latest and greatest in the market from practitioners. Um, and from analysts in order to determine how to make it better within your organization. If you're not focusing on it, you need to be focusing on it uh, because, again, it, it is, uh, I, I think it has evolved as a core competency within organizations, that, this capability to deliver um, better projects through better selection, better uh, use of resources, and better alignment to strategy. So in order to do that, we can reference uh, industry analysts. You know, they're a point of reference for best practice and tools. Uh, and just like anything, any other external, whether it's a framework or whether it's, uh, you know, analyst comments, they need to be taken in context. Uh, in most cases, they are doing surveys and they are talking to a lot of people. So they're generalizing generalizing practices in the specific domain uh, which means that you have to figure it out and understand it first what is it that they're saying and then secondly internalize it contextualize it to your um, organizational uh, situation uh, and this involves leadership this involves what has worked previously um, this involves um, you know having a plan of action on how you would actually implement any of these practices. So uh, just like with any um, pr framework, process framework and tool, what you have to do is, um, you know, again, figure out what's gonna work for your organization and not necessarily uh, take it in um, literally as um, in this case, as the analysts are, are stating. So I list some here, you know, we're gonna focus the the one that we're going to focus on today is the hype cycle from Gartner, and we're going to have a, we're going to put our own spin on it um, as a point of reference for best practice tools. But you know we could do the same thing with um, the Forrester one. We could do the same with IDC. We could do the same with Infotech. Um, they all have um, you know the, their own interpretation of what those best practices and tools are. So if we go to the to the Gardner hype cycle, which represented before, you know, the way they do this is they, again, they they're doing a survey, they're talking to organizations. Um, that in itself has bias because they're not talking to everybody; they're talking to just a sample of organizations, and then they're making their own call on, you know, what is uh, popular uh, or what is being implemented and what could add value. Uh, in this case, you know, we're looking at the hype cycle for strategic portfolio management. And I, again, I want to highlight that every one of these are practices and technologies, you know, processes and tools that you could be implementing to improve uh, portfolio management, in this case, strategic portfolio management. I'm going to take a slightly different spin on this. Um, 
I, I will highlight that you know they 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 talk about timing of um, you know when these processes and tools are going to be implemented. Uh, the the another interesting you know point is that there there's there's relationship between all of these agile beyond IT and agile project management. Okay, yes, they they define them as differently, but in general terms, we're talking about implementing agile in an organization. So I want to put that um, to also uh, to the forefront because what we've done is kind of clustered them and highlight highlight it um, what you should be focusing on. So on um, uh, in general terms, what I did is I directionally placed time to implement. In other words, the greater you are to the right of practices, the longer um, is going to take for you to implement. So strategic portfolio management, if you're doing it as defined, which means that you're taking three use cases, which is EPMO, strategic realization officer, strategy execution, and application portfolio management, and an IPA, you know, those are, those are three different uh, process and, and, and tools that you would have to implement to achieve strategic portfolio management. So that's why it's more to the right. And I put obviously to the furthest right, which I'm not sure with whether it's it's uh, entirely correct, time to implement AI enabled PPM, RPA enabled EP, PPM. Right now we're about, I'm about to show you how we have Sophia GPT within one plan. So <clears throat> while uh, if you were to internalize this, um, AI enabled PPM and what what is meant by AI enabled PPM is basically imagine a portfolio management system where everything is automated, and you're basically uh, approving um, or changing recommendations that are being made by um, an AI uh, AI solution. Okay, so well, we're clearly not there yet, um, but we are on our way. So um, that's where Sophia GBT in the case of one plan supports that, and I'll talk about that in a second. But um, here we're talking about you know the the, the future way into the future. Also RPA enabled PPM where um, we will have uh, automation uh, where data will get um, captured uh, by uh, RPA and then that will um, complete. Imagine having your entire PPM completed by you know workflows driven by RPA. So that's why I've placed this, you know, way into the future. Uh, I place EPM, EPMO in the center because, you know, that that should be for a larger organization, an enterprise um, project management office or portfolio management office should be the um, kind of the end goal. I and, and I'm, I'll, I'll go on a limb and say that that's really what uh, an organization should do because it's the centerpiece of connecting to strategy if you're going up uh, towards your objectives and key results. And then if you're going down towards your uh, collaborative work management, you need to connect to the EPMO. That happens to be a strength of one plan. It's where one plan started. So I placed it in the center. You can see that I have connections to other uh, sets of practice, other clusters. So we have lean portfolio management, agile beyond IT, agile pro project management, and enterprise agile frameworks. They all relate to, again, shifting left, a topic that we've covered in um, some of our webinars already, where one plan actually supports your transformation towards agile practices internally. And um, so all those generally have to do with um, how are you going to implement agile uh, within the organization. To the left of that, we have adaptive, which means that you're combining both the uh, traditional you know, waterfall uh, techniques with uh, more agile practices, whether you're talking about governance, whether you're talking about delivery, uh, or whether you're talking about program management. So uh, again, it's related to strategic portfolio management. If you um, are in an organization where you're gonna be doing or tracking both agile and non-agile um, delivery uh, uh, initiatives. Uh, at the bottom here, I have a product funding, product-centered uh, delivery model, and PPM for new product development. So Agile has um, also brought to the forefront uh, the need to uh, look at our uh, what we deliver to customers as products. And also, this is driven by um, technology and how we are now delivering um, technology products to, uh, to our customers. So that's why that is important. 
And then on the bottom left, in terms of maturity required, a domain PMO and resource management, you know, we, we find that that is one of the, you know, if, if you're doing project portfolio management, after building your inventory, the next capability that you're gonna to have to build internally is, you know, resource management. Can I actually see where everybody's working, the capacity they have and how I can uh, optimize them across all initiatives in the organization. Uh, the check mark marks, you know, what's currently in adoption based on these surveys. Um, I would, you know, I would tend to agree um, with, uh, with the assessment. Um, you know, we do have customers that are um, doing enterprise agile frameworks, you know, whether it's safe or less or uh, scrum of scrums. Um, we have customers that are focusing on product. I'm surprised about the product development because, you know, there we we don't see as much um, uh, into new product development, but we do have you know organizations that have structured their portfolios in terms of products, and um, for sure, uh, domain PMOs we participate in a lot of organization where where this is taking place. It's basically a business unit PMO. It's not IT and it's not an EPMO. Uh, on the adaptive side, uh, one plan is very strong. Um, we were one of the first to actually come out um, with um, an adaptive uh, portfolio management solution that allows you to harmonize um, agile and non-agile uh, projects uh, within within your entire portfolio. So um, these are the you know the clusters and their current adoption. If we go to the next level, you know so what is next? So once you focus on uh, the um, you know the blue check marks you know what is likely to come next and here we see you know some interesting expansion I'm surprised that you know resource management is noted as adoption in the future because we actually see that um, quite frequently in organizations as I said earlier so I might not disagree with that um, you know that survey result uh, but if we go to the top we can see yes application portfolio management we are seeing more interest in actually um, mapping your initiatives to the impact of uh, applications within uh, the organization managed by IT. Digital transformation office, you know, this has been around for some time, um, but it's more prevalent. It's more of a program office. Um, uh, it could be a spinoff of an EPMO um, to deal with uh, digital initiatives. Um, and um, again, I, I think this has been in, in place for some time uh, now, but you know, it's um, there's more formalization of a uh, of a digital transformation office. Obviously, anything having to do with Agile um, is continuing to grow. Um, we've done webinars previously where we've stated that, uh, you know, it's now 60% of initiatives that are actually being driven by Agile methods, more than half. So, you know, that would support um, that practice as, um, you know, being uh, one that's gonna be adopted in the future. So, if you were to, you know, map, uh, continuous improvement plan for your uh, organization, you would want to make sure that you're checking these off. And, um, you know, it, in general terms, um, what this is saying is that, okay, if you're not adaptive, um, you have to focus on it now. You're moving to agile or becoming more agile. Um, you have to take into account um, applications and, you know, that your entire IT landscape, whether it's business architecture or enterprise architecture, um, if you have not had a program office for uh, portfolio uh, for digital transformation, you should consider one. And then, as I said earlier, resource management is a I I think that's a key component of PPM. I don't know if some, if you're not doing it right now, then it's something that you have to you know hurry up and uh, and get going on because it's a it's a clear need to see where where all the resources in the organization are allocated. Now, the way this translates to to one plan is that we have a set of capabilities, process and tools to actually address the different stakeholders in the organization uh, and the different personas that are gonna be in this process. And this is what makes one plan uh, a full strategic portfolio management platform that can accommodate the different scenarios that I just painted. Uh, you have or initiation, let's, let's address the initiation pillar. So we have to manage demand, we have to take in requests, and we have to uh, generate ideas, we have to drive innovation in the organization. So for those stakeholders, both internal and external, so your, your 
your team members internally uh, and your customers, um, they're, they are asking for you know, changes to what they are being delivered. So that's where one plan has a, a request portal and an ideation portal where you can actually uh, provide uh, that uh, user experience for those stakeholders to you know, in, you know, complete their requests and ideas. And um, that is supported by workflow, uh, which in most cases uh, it can um, you know, drive decision making by um, different approvers. So that's um, you know, one plan has th those capabilities to address the, the initiation area. That what we we put strategy as a uh, you know as a second step. You could have put it first also, but here the the the, the concept is that you know these requests and ideas are impacting strategy, and it could be that you have to change strategy or your driving strategy, you know, based on what your customers are asking for. So to that end, uh, senior leadership has within one plan uh, my strategy area where you can have your OKRs, both objectives and key results. Um, explicitly captured and managed um, and you can see you know the the um, achieving the the key results based on the impact from uh, initiatives that you've defined um, and tracking of the metrics and reporting of the metrics to see exactly whether you're going to actually going to be able to meet your objectives uh, at the same time a lot of evolution of the organization through the enterprise architecture and business architecture can actually be also be tracked within one plan. So this might be also a source of uh, initiatives uh, for the organization. I mean, whether it's new applications, um, improvement of uh, capabilities, so capability-based strategic planning, uh, improvement of value streams, customer journeys, et cetera. You're gonna track that all and the impact of technology in within the um, enterprise architecture area of one plan. All of these, really what they do is they drive initiatives that you're going to actually include within your portfolio. And um, now we're getting into uh, selection, prioritization, and um, uh, of, of portfolio items that have been, um, you know, that have risen from all of the initiatives that are occurred in initiation and strategy. So, so to that end, that's where you know the, the strengths of one plan lie in terms of uh, portfolio planning, whether it's through um, our list view, or, uh, list views, our uh, boards, or roadmap. Um, there is a what if scenario modeling capability that our modeler um, that allows you to you know define scenarios based on different assumptions, and then finally uh, the one plan cost planner uh, allows you to uh, understand. Um, the level of investment at the, at the different um, with the different plan types, what we call plan types, which is really the hierarchy, the planning hierarchy that you have within your portfolio. Simply, um, you know, portfolio program project Epic is which is within our our standard solution. So that's what's available for uh, the portfolio managers. In execution, a lot of different tools for the uh, personas there. We have plan managers, which are project managers or scrum masters, and one plan actually does have a scheduling engine and a board within it um, for doing both waterfall and agile plans, but if you happen to have uh, the source data in other systems, you can bring it in. This is where um, we're providing a lot of value, for instance, in the collaborative space where these tools are already in place, but they don't have uh, an overarching um, solution for you know managing it as a entire enterprise portfolio, and that's where one plan comes in. Same goes for you know agile portfolio management. One plan as a board, but we um, in those scenarios because agile plans are being done in the agile planning tools, you will likely in, uh, integrate and synchronize that data with one plan on an ongoing basis um, through our one connect platform, which I will address uh, in a minute. Uh, the next set of um, users personas are the resource managers, which are really important, and that's where one plan has um, you know very robust features, both at the plan level and at the global resource summary level, where you can see all resources and all projects and determine where um, uh, resources are over allocated and make changes again, whether you're a resource manager communicating to the rest of the organization where the um, users are going to be. Uh, your team members are going to be assigned to those projects. For team members, they have uh, a very simple level of my work list where they can see all the work that's been assigned to them. 
Um, if you are an organization that needs a timesheet, we do have um, a formal timesheet for team members to complete. Uh, the interesting part about um, the, my work, it, it reflects all the work that somebody can be assigned, not only project work, but you know, if you happen to be assigned the tracking of um, a key result, for instance, even though you're a team member, you're going to be able to actually you know, track that within there. Um, also, a risk or an issue, uh, anything that has been assigned to you will show up within uh, my work. Uh, finally, when we're trying to tie everything together, where there's a delivery and outcome uh, measurement, and that's where you know executives uh, have uh, status reports, um, have dashboards, and then visualizations to see the dependencies um, within um, within all of the elements being managed within one plan. Uh, one plan um, uses Power BI as its primary reporting tool. Um, we do have you know the ability to extract data if you happen to be using other um, reporting uh, tool sets and then finally you know we we do have the ability to track benefits uh, not showing here for from a real estate standpoint but uh, if you wanted to maintain um, the project items open in order to track um, you know both uh, benefit realization um, post closing of a project uh, you can actually do that we do put here um, Sophia GPT at the bottom because it's it's supporting uh, the entire life cycle um, and all of the different users and that is within your um, you know your one plan group what we call group which is a one plan site uh, it's it's your data set it this is using um, Azure um, open AI so um, you know it, it is protected um, just like the you know the rest of the one plan data set so why why is this um important for you to know well all of these capabilities are configured differently depending on the solution that we are targeting what your end state solution is and i think that's the hard part for uh industry analysts to actually recognize that one plan is actually a strategic portfolio management platform it can address strategic portfolio management uh, capabilities uh, we have a solution for that we have a lean portfolio management, an agile portfolio management template, actually. So if you're in this scenario, you could actually use one plan to do agile portfolio management. Uh, we are one of the first to come out, like I said, with the adaptive project management um, uh, capabilities. It's been around now for years, where we, again, uh, bring together agile and non-agile uh, work initiatives. And if you wanted to use one plan just for collaborative work management, you know, team members just managing projects, uh, project managers and team members just managing um, you know projects without really having all of the um, portfolio management capabilities you can do that within one plan so um, again you have uh, a, a set of mo uh, modules and capabilities to address the different scenarios that I painted previously um, and you know I, I'll be more direct here but what we see here are those uh, processes and tools that are supported by um, by the one plan solution template. So if you're looking uh, within uh, industry analyst reports and they talk about strategic portfolio management, you know, strategy realization, digital transformation, application portfolio management, all those can be encompassed within the strategic portfolio management solution template for one plan. You can actually start that right now in a configuration will uh, you know makes an attempt at addressing the main capabilities required in order to deliver on these scenarios. From an EPML standpoint, and I'll include adaptive here because for the most part now, you know, an EPML does have to recognize that they're doing agile projects. We have an adaptive project portfolio management solution. And um, that actually allows you, as it states there, you know, balance the benefits of both agile and non-agile methodologies um, while you know providing um, you know full portfolio management capabilities. In terms of agile portfolio management, uh, again, any of the um, Agile process and tools that have been listed previously are um, addressed by our Agile portfolio management template, and which, by the way, can be changed. So it's not only <clears throat> while there are some prescriptive uh, uh, guidance on you know what those uh, processes and tools must have. You know, one plan very easily does have a safe, for instance, um, configuration. So if you're managing value streams instead of program value streams, portfolios, um, epics, and features. Um, within a uh, plan increment uh, um, cadence, you know, one plan has a template uh, that addresses that. 
um, if you're doing lean portfolio management at a higher level and just want to do uh, Epix, um, one plan um, can be configured to that uh, specifically. So again, you, th there is also flexibility within the solution templates to um, address the specific uh, um, you know, definitions of, of, of these process and tools. For domain PFO and resource management, we actually have a portfolio planning, um, just a very simple portfolio planning template. There's also a, also a resource management template. I put it, I put here these both because you know, and most most likely, even when you're doing resource management, you're going to be um, looking at portfolio planning. Uh, for the uh, new product development um, set of practices and tools, OnePlan has a product portfolio management solution. Again, a specific configuration to manage products and manage the initiatives that are uh, associated to those products. And then finally, I did state AI-enabled PPM and RPA-enabled PPM because we have been, um, in terms of you know, capturing the wave with the latest and greatest generative AI um, capabilities that are in the market, one plan already uh, has integrated uh, you know, ChatGPT through Azure OpenAI and um, also um, have um, integrations to Power Automate, which are important because that is uh, a strong RPA um, capability that Microsoft provides. So, um, you know, that's one way of uh, addressing the, the RPA enabled PPM features. So, one uh, aspect that's important to note, uh, uh, the, one of the reasons that we can um, achieve um, you know all the different scenarios also has to do with our integration capabilities so um, we have connectors through our one connect platform and if we don't we can actually build them um, if needed if you know we don't happen to have one uh, for the solutions that you you see here um, it, the the microsoft ones uh, there's some microsoft ones that are at no cost which are you know the project uh, project uh, for the web and planner sharepoint and teams uh, and then there are subscriptions for um, the rest of them. You know, the more common scenarios include, as I said, integrating agile workloads, either through Azure DevOps or Jira, um, bringing in uh, project work through the project tools that Microsoft has or through Smartsheet, um, and then um, bringing in financial data when we're doing actuals through uh, SAP Workday. You know, but by uh, this point, you know, after five years, we've pretty much done them all for our customers. I do want to highlight that there is, um, you know, enterprise architecture. If you are doing IPA, there's Smart 360, which is um, uh, the tool that we have a relationship uh, with to develop uh, your enterprise architecture um, repository and also um, integration to other tools such as Lean IX um, in order to bring in those our enterprise architecture elements into one plan. And I uh, have one more mention on one plan AI and Sophia GBT, and you know, we're just starting. So um, we're focusing on this a lot and um, expect <clears throat> to uh, have a lot more uh, features. Uh, what we want to do is you know, take full advantage of what's currently available in the market and make it part of, of our um, of the one plan SPM platform. So you know look for that um, as an added benefit because you don't have to um, do that on your own for portfolio management. It will be integrated within the one plan platform. Um, so it is uh, an area of investment for us. And you know as you've seen through our integration of uh, our launch of Sophia GPT, this will continue. So. How does how does this translate then to our customers? So I you know it, it's interesting that in every one of these we, we can probably for every one of the scenarios uh, that I painted uh, our customers are actually um, focused on them and are improving them. So I'm just going to highlight you can see all all of our customer stories and kind of get a sense of what they were trying to improve within the strategic portfolio management. But you know, we are very focused on making sure that, again, whatever you're trying to do from those process and tools that uh, I highlighted earlier, we are going to be able to deliver a benefit to your organization. And I think, um, you know, our customer testimonials uh, speak for themselves in terms of what we've, we've done for customers through the One Plan solution and our, and our services. Uh, I'll just highlight a couple that I was personally involved. You know, there's um, 
a consumer product uh, personal care and grooming organization they had um really a, a couple of different uh uh challenges one had to do with being able to see all their initiatives um so there were there was some um strategic execution management involved uh there was also a heavy focus on npd so um and organizing um and improving accelerating really the the, the uh, new product development life cycle for the organization they were kind of you know it was, it was a little um unorganized uh, you know for lack of a better word um and also you know as you see the new product development and strategy execution management you know try to understand the interdependencies between other value streams in the organization so in this case one plan for strategic portfolio management was um, implemented as well as uh, one plan for new product development so we actually had two different one plan groups uh, in this organization uh, users you know wasn't necessarily that large only 100 managers 200 team members the outcomes you know what we, we were looking to get is you know overall inventory of initiatives aligned to okrs that's where the strategy execution comes in uh, we were trying to obtain greater attainment of MPD revenue contributions. So what, our, our new products, as we take them to market quicker, can we generate, um, you know, the expected uh, revenue, increase in revenue. Um, better handoff and coordination with cross-matrix initiatives, especially at the strategy execution level, um, and improved governance of the MPD lifecycle. So, you know, can we track better? to our um, NPD uh, life cycle through the use of one plan. So for the most part, the um, benefits were achieved. You know, it, it, they're still working at it. It's an ongoing process. I will say that uh, these initiatives tend to, um, uh, you know, be um, multiple years in the making, uh, but you do have to get started. Otherwise, you're never going to be able to, you know, fix and improve um, what you're trying to, to accomplish. Uh, the second one is, um, you know, financial transaction processor. Uh, they didn't really have a formal PMO. Um, lack alignment of major initiatives to company OKRs. And here, leadership was really looking at, you know, how can we align? How can we see the impact of what we're delivering on uh, the overall strategy of the organization? Uh, lack of interdependencies between initiatives. And then what they wanted to do also is to have domain PMO. So this is the concept of the business unit PMO. So have the ePMO, but also um, empower the business units to have and um, have a, a, a central point of focus on delivery of projects. So in this case, we you know did the um, one plan for an ePMO and one plan for business unit PMOs. Not a huge amount of uh, users, um, but again, it's the top management. Uh, that's actually working um, in this and then team members that are only team members that are in those um, very large initiatives expected outcome um, visibility of an initiatives impact okrs um, they empower like i said those business unit pmos to get their act together in terms of delivery of projects and then um, overall capacity planning and project delivery for the entire organization so you can see that here we're addressing a couple of the different scenarios through well, you know a single one plan solution and in this case it was one um one uh specific one plan group uh so it was interesting how we were able to structure the planning hierarchy to both have uh, a pmo an enterprise pmo as well as the business unit pmos within the same planning hierarchy so that was a, an interesting approach so those are two examples of Again, how the one plan platform has the breadth of capabilities to address multiple scenarios. So, coming up to a, a close, so you know, one plan is a full feature strategic portfolio management platform. I think I, I've described that um, through the um, personas, um, capabilities uh, that we have within the tool. And that allows us to cover multiple scenarios through the solution templates. Uh, the modules, you know, allow an organization to focus on an EPMO, <clears throat> move up and enter into strategy execution, as well as uh, laterally into IT portfolio analysis, application portfolio analysis, analysis, and that is a definition of strat uh, strategic portfolio management. So, because one plan um, can allow you to move up into strategy execution, and then also see the impact on IT through enterprise architecture, that's what 
really defines uh, strategy, uh, strategic portfolio management. And then from a bottom-up standpoint, if you wanted to start the PMO and then connect to collaborative work management tools, you know, one plan can also do that, or it can be the tool for collaborative work management if you choose, choose to do so. There are a lot of other tools out there, so it's like that you're going to have to connect uh, them, and that's what, what one plan uh, allows you to do, to have that EPMO that connects to those other collaborative tools. And then finally, Agile is not going to end. We're going to continue to move uh, shift left um, um, in order to, you know, be more, uh, develop more enterprise agile capabilities. Um, and as a result, you know, we have that covered in terms of uh, adaptive and agile uh, portfolio solution templates that give you those capabilities. So you're, you're making the right choice with one plan. It gives you the breadth uh, of features to, you know, cover multiple scenarios. So for those of you that don't know us, you know, um, we are within the Microsoft ecosystem, one of the primary uh, partners, if not the most important one over the last five years, uh, being a winner of three of the last five years and, and, and the other two years as finalists. We are um, in constant communication with the industry analysts because we listen to customer requests and always reference uh, the better practices in order to make sure that we're delivering to you uh, the best possible solutions to to keep you on the leading edge. Uh, as you see a logo of Aldrich Capital Partners, we recently uh, became part of the Aldrich uh, family as a, one of their portfolio companies. So we do have the, the backing to continue on our growth. And as we always say, please, um, if you are in a situation, position where you are looking to improve uh, portfolio management through any of the uh, disciplines that I've talked about today, you know, all, all of our solutions are available for trial. So um, feel free to, you know, get started and we can help you through uh, learning how to use it um, to get it within your organization. Uh, please make contact so that we can give you a personalized one-on-one -on -one demo in any of these uh, and support your trial. And um, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate you giving me um, your your time today to talk about uh, how one plan can um, support your uh, strategic portfolio management initiatives. Thank you.